Hey guys, this is Lala Legacy, and welcome back to another episode of Seabed. So, let's just jump right back in. As we made our rounds in the library, changing all the weekend light or weekend lights, I spotted a braided girl reading a book at one of the desks. Aha! I knew I'd find you here, Sinai! The girl raised her face from the book to look at me. She fixed the position of her glasses with her index finger. Takako? Good afternoon, Miss Sanai! Entering behind me, Mayuko spotted Sanai as well and gave her a greeting. Good afternoon! Sanai, or whoops, good afternoon, Sanai replied in a small voice. Are you planning on reading here for a while? Sanai turned to me and made a barely perceptible nod. My room was too bright for reading. Sanai fixed the position of her glasses again. I'll return the books I borrowed later today. Alright! Her eyes behind the glasses lit up. I slightly raised my folded stepladder I had on my shoulder. I'm kind of doing my share of forced labor today. Miss Sakako, I would appreciate it if you refrained from that choice of words. You can't exactly call it forced when you volunteered yourself. Mayuko fur uh, furrowed her brows in mock indignation. What about the labor part? I think that applies just fine. You are helping us out. Or you are helping us all out. Not to mention it helps your rehabilitation. Still holding the bag of light bulbs, Mayuko crossed her arms. I didn't know it had anything to do with my rehabilitation. It does. In any case, we should hurry and finish up. Mayuko pulled out the sleeve of my or pulled on the sleeve of my hand uh, that su <laughs> blah, 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 that supported most of the folded stepladder's weight. If I didn't want to fall, I had no choice but to follow her. See you later. I waved Sanai goodbye and she answered me with a light smile and a wave of her own. She's a cutie. I pushed the fluorescent tube into its place in the ceiling and made sure to fasten it so it wouldn't fall on someone's head later. And with this we're done! After confirming the light worked fine, I folded up the stepladder. Mayuko crossed out the last circle on the floor plan. She put the cap on her pen before returning it to her pocket. Thank you very much for today. Mayuko bowed her head in an expression or in an expression of thanks. And do you still have work after this? I heaved the uh, folded step ladder on my shoulder so it wouldn't upset my balance. I just have to make my rounds. In that case, I'll go back to Sanai after I put this back. I pointed at the step ladder. Mayuko picked up the paper bag with the old light bulbs in it. Bring me some good sweets next time. I'll think about it. I want the sponge cake. Okay, okay. So, where was Sachiko during all of this? That's my question. Sanai, still on her bed, rummaged through the nearby shelf and pulled out a wooden plate with rice crackers on it. Aww. Here, have some. I picked up one of the wrapped, uh, wrapped in. S ah. I picked up the one wrapped in seaweed and popped it into my mouth. Thanks. The sweet, or the seaweed already had a certain moistness to it, but the actual cracker was crunchy enough to feel fresh. Sanai herself picked one, or picked up a can from the shelf. After opening it, she scooped up some of the tea powder with a spoon then added it to the boiling water in the pot. After hitting the spoon again on the side, to the, or side of the can to return the residue powder, she closed its lid, returning it to the shelf, and filled the teacups with tea. The tea came just, or just when I was starting to get thirsty from all the dry rice crackers. Thanks! I took the teacup from her and helped myself to a sip of the hot liquid. Sanai's small room housed a bed, a cabinet, and the cane chair I brought from the recreation room. 
It was way smaller than my room, but it felt more spacious. I, or I loved seaweed crackers all my life. The person who came up with combining seaweed and rice crackers must have been a genius. I like them too. I prefer rice crackers with sesame though. Yeah, that one's pretty good too. You start off wanting to have only one or two, but soon enough you're left with an empty box. I reached out to grab the second cracker. Are you perhaps hungry? I stopped Sanaya as she was about to reach out toward the shelf again. Nah, not really. But dinner here is kind of bland, don't you think? And I never feel, uh, I never really feel all that full afterwards. Yeah, that's sort of a given. This is a sanatorium, after all. Meals are made with the consideration for a balance of nutrients. Yeah, I wish they'd at least let me use my own seasoning. The dry wind clattered against the window next to the bed. Sanaya reached out and closed it, making the sound or making the sound cease. The wind has grown stronger lately. Autumn is right around the corner. That's true. Sanaya answered. Then she glanced out the window, looking at the tree shedding its red and yellow leaves. A single leaf on one of its branches fluttered in the wind. Uh, by the time that tree is fully stripped of leaves, the wind will calm down a bit. Temperatures will be lower, too. Is that how it works? Happens every year. Sanaya's eyes were still fixed on the window as she said that. How long have you been here? I'm not sure anymore. I stopped counting after the first five years. She turned back to me. Hmm. Don't you get bored of being here? I don't know. I don't usually think about stuff like that. Really? Sanai slowly nodded. Really? Even if I tried thinking about it, all I'd remember are memories of living here. It's not like I could, or could compare this place to any other. I see. I glanced back at the lonely tree. A gust of wind made its sunset-colored leaves brush against the windows of glass. Further beyond that tree lay a forest that continued till the harbor. I could see some trees with colored leaves there as well. How about you, Takako? Do you not get bored of this place? Well, living surrounded by nature on the top of a mountain has its upsides. The port town below is not exactly a bustling metropo er, metropolis, but it's like a retro feel. I also love how the wind here always has the scent of the sea to it. I looked at the port town beyond the window. It looked silent and lifeless in the distant, oh, or distance, almost like a picture. It's pretty boring here during the winter. Well, I guess that's how winters are everywhere. I like reading books, so I have everything I want right here. Sanai lifted a book from her knees. Yeah, this place sure has a lot of books. I glanced toward the direction of the library. Now that I think about it, I haven't been given the library key yet. If you have nothing to do during winter, why not try reading some books as well? I'm sure Miss Mayuka will lend you the key if you ask. Nah, I'm good. I get plenty of reading just from the stuff you recommend. Ah, now that I think about it, you don't have anything to read right now, do you? Do you want me to lend you a volume or two? <laughs> Maybe not right now. I still have to write in my diary. I crossed my legs again and pulled out a new notebook from my pocket. That's a new one, isn't it? I got it today! Have you written in your diary today? On the side table next to Sanai's bed rested a different notebook. Yes, I have. My diary entries mostly consist of my opinions on books, though. At least you always have something to write about, I guess. What would, or would you like to write in yours right now? You could use my table if you want. I stopped Sanai just as she, or right as she was about to climb out of the bed. I'll do it later. I've got some stuff to write today, so it shouldn't take that long. I see. Well, what are you reading right now, anyway? The book resting under Sanai's hands had a marker stuck into it around the middle. Sanai picked it up and showed me the cover. There was a bucket with a picture of a, uh, of a sci-fi looking city drawn on it. The letters above the bucket spelled out Seabed. Seabed. It's a mystery novel. 
The protagonist and her lover visit a southern island and get stuck repeating the same day over and over again. I see, so it's one of those loop stories I keep hearing about. Is it fun? It's fun so far. If it doesn't fall apart in the middle, I'll lend it to you before returning it to the library. I'll be looking forward to that. The southern islands are cool, but we can't go anywhere right now. But it's nice to be able to make the journey in your own head, at least. Have you traveled before? Yeah, quite a bit, actually. It's a long story, but do you want to hear it? Sanai made a friendly smile. I'm okay. But what about your diary? I could always do it later. Besides, Mayuko said recounting my memories to other people helps with my condition. In that case, I'd definitely like to hear what you have to say. Sanai left the book on the side table and turned to face me. I began to visualize one of my trips in my head so I could tell her everything in great detail. Ah. So, Seabed is a book! Like Groundhog's Day! The sky on that day was of the different or of the color of brand new jeans. The wooden planks creaked under each of my steps. The main tourist attractions of this port, or port town, were above the sea. There were countless restaurants and souvenir shops lining the wooden deck. The wharf uh, had seen its fair share of use over the years. Some of its planks let out unsettling creaks as people stepped on them. Surprised by the abrupt sound, I jumped back, almost crashing into a tall young man standing behind me. However, he managed to dodge me, his light blonde hair fluttering in the wind as he did. But by the time I regained my balance, I was about to, er, and was about to apologize, the man had already blended into the crowd of tourists, vanishing from sight. As I was trying to find the man again, Sachiko came over and told me she had spotted him by the crab signboard! Really? So, oh, Sachiko dress is so cute. I looked in the direction she was pointing at and saw a large sign shaped like a ship's steering wheel. In the center, it had a picture of a massive crab. I hurried towards it. Sachiko followed. Don't move from here! I told Sachiko to wait as she was still busy admiring the sign, then turned around to look for someone who'd take a photo of us. Hey! Photo! Uh, ahem. <clears throat> Could you take a photo of us, please? I approached a well-built, middle-aged man wearing a sun cap and conveyed to him, mostly through gestures, that I wanted a picture. The man gave me a thumbs up. I hurried back to the signboard and lined up next to Sachiko. Don't forget to smile! I wrapped my arm around Sachiko's waist and pulled her closer. Then, say something funny. Um... Say whiskey. The man pushed the shutter uh, button while I was flustered. <laughs> a jumper cable walks into a bar! Just as Sachiko narrowed her eyes. <laughs> the instant or the instant print camera flashed and our picture was burned into the film. Holding the pic or the finished picture, the man hollered out or hollered a okay our way. Right at the la very last moment before the flash, I spotted a tall young man standing behind us. After making a peace sign right in the middle of our picture, he gracefully drew away from us, melting into the crowd of tourists. What was that? I think that was the man you almost crashed into earlier, said Sachiko, looking in the direction of where the mysterious person disappeared in. The man wearing a, or the sun cap returned to us, balling his hand into a fist to convey how great the picture turned out to be. Meanwhile, the floorboards continued to creak under his weight. As he reached us, he handed me the camera in the picture. Thanks! You're welcome! He patted me on the shoulder with enough force to almost dislocate it, oh Jesus, then disappeared into the crowd. I flapped the picture a few times uh, for the image to show up. Ugh. I see you made some new friends. Sachiko addressed me as I let out a gasp of surprise. The picture showed a somewhat discontent Sachiko under the crab sign, and there I was next to her making a confused face as I looked 
or as I looked, not at the camera, but the young man behind us. And it wasn't just the man that hijacked our picture. There was a whole group of people making weird faces and peace signs that I previously hadn't noticed at all. <laughs> Photobombers are the worst! <laughs> I wonder if we came a bit too early. The ship we reserved to reach the island was nowhere in sight. I leaned against the wooden fence to catch my breath, making it creak. A gust of cold wind from behind ruffled my hair, caressing my cheeks as it drifted along toward the town. Thirsty? Yeah, a little. Hmm, what's this? I spotted one of the tourists holding a transparent cup with some odd drink. The top of it was white, the bottom of it was black. On second thought, I could have sworn I'd seen that before. I wonder if it's like a coke float. Is that what you want? Sachiko narrowed her eyes and smiled. I saw it being sold at the shop we just passed. Want me to treat you to one? You would? Thanks! Sachiko turned around or turned yeah, turned around her heel, her long hair dancing in the wind, and continued down the road toward the nearby shops. The street was lined with brightly colored, blue, red, and yellow buildings and signboards, but the clamor of shop owners calling everyone to take a look made even that visual effect pale in comparison. Sachiko, clicking her heels against the hard asphalt, kept passing by and dodging the never-ending groups of people going the opposite way. I shifted my gaze to the scenery of the town once she disappeared from my field of vision. <sighs> The sight itself felt as though I was gazing at the stage of a grand opera. It was enough to make me heave a sigh of admiration. Beyond the vivacious uh, shop district, and up the slope, there, or there rose countless buildings that boasted roofs of matching colors depending on the district. The road twisting up the hill and into the distance seemed as though it ca or cleaved the entire port town in two. I, or it connected to various other streets, coiling around the slope of the hill. In the distance, I could see bean-sized cars popping up and, oh yeah, up and out of the lush fit. Or, I cannot read right now. Of the lush fir trees and tall buildings with rectangular windows. The tallest structures on both sides of the town seemed like dull office buildings, but hidden between them, I could also spot a few more hotels with certain individuality. They boasted graceful renaissance barge, or barge boards under their windows, as well as intricately designed cornician columns. The few mansions in front of them uh, seemed to have been built using Victorian architecture, with arched entranceways and tower roofs. I felt almost like a rabbit compared or a rabbit could come darting out of them at any minute. A good number of trees towered amo or among the buildings, giving the colorful townscape a somewhat relaxing feel. Like pieces of broccoli lining a lunchbox. Okay. The various old buildings from before the Industrial Revolution mixing in with those utilizing a more modern type of architecture gave the town a look of, coloss or of a colossal toy box. There were even a number of ancient-looking cable cars running along its chaotically designed roads. Hmm. My eyes grew tired as I tried making out where the cable car was going. Uh-oh. Oh, okay, I thought she got bumped into. I shook my head and closed my eyelids. I could hear the sound of waves over among the noisy bustle of the town. A ship horn sounded somewhere in the distance behind me. A gust of cold wind whizzed past my ear, making the flags in front of the shops flutter, then rustling the trees as it continued rising up the hill. I felt like I could hear the buzzing of engines and cable cars, even the spinning of wheels from the distant road I'd been observing. I listened in, imagining that cacophony of all those sounds was the breathing of the town as one giant living organism. Eventually, all, or in the chaos of all those noises, I made out the stable rhythm of a sound I was familiar with. I listened more closely, concentrating on that one sound alone. It was the sound of heels clicking against the hard surface. Here, I brought what you wanted. Thanks!
But that is all the time that I have for this episode, guys. But if you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up down below. And it yeah, and I almost choked on myself. Okay, and if you haven't already subscribed, by subscribing, you're becoming part of a legacy. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!